Hello my soccer universe, as the international break is approaching and all the leagues stopped on Sunday, you will get a few review videos probably today, one tomorrow and so on. I decided to skip on the Premier League because there were two little games to really talk about and there are a few good games coming uh, back, so almost back to old skates, skate scheduling. And I decided let's not start for once in Austria and Germany, but uh, the Eredivisie and League 1, where especially the Eredivisie, I totally enjoyed uh, yesterday afternoon. I made a little short video about it, but it deserves a whole lot more attention. This to me was probably the highlight of the entire weekend and that is despite Serie A having major uh, store storylines in there. But I think what was happening uh, in Holland, not the Netherlands, uh, it's just two amazing games. Absolutely two amazing games. And then also the evening game in France was not a bad one at all. I mean, it was only one goal, but it seemed like a personal duel between uh, Neymar and Messi against Gregory Lopez, especially in the second half. Um, but... PSG prevail over uh, Lyon in the big match uh, in France over the weekend. We also had a kind of a record, I think, a red card after just 17 seconds or something like that. Something ridiculous like, like that. Nice uh, got that one. But a um, little bit of a um, uh, <laughs> uh, disclaimer. I have not seen too much of Ligue 1, but I hell with the... Uh, the effort to watch the big Saturday or uh, Sunday afternoon in the Eredivisie and that's where I want to start. I mean you see here the results and uh, you know I can again go on that Vitesse is not winning again that Herrenwein actually had a big win over Twente 2-1 because we said that Twente might actually make it a top four. Now Herrenwein uh, they deserve their spot up there on the wall, Valweig with a 5-1 over Cambur, that also seems like, but you know, there were two red cards in there as well, but it's all about the last two games. PSV against Feyenoord, what a game that was. And also, I woke up in the 25th minute, you know, I, I took a slight nap, um, then uh, switched over, and it was already 2-1 uh, for PSV, and I was kind of... Did I now miss the, uh, the core of the game? No, fortunately not. I was not even halfway there. It was just an amazing game where um, then in the first 10 minutes seemingly, it was a fair not really putting pressure on PSV and that's how the first uh, goal even came where they were pressuring Max. Um, the ball then um, finds its way to Jan Baksh who then plays it over to Idi Idrisi to make it 1-0 in the third minute. However, slowly PSV get into the game and especially Sangare and uh, Hakbo. Cole Cody Hakbo was the star of this game. First of all, a corner kick that Brent with, with the outside of his foot puts in and that guy is huge and the Feyenoord defense completely forgot him. It was a, in a, it was a brilliant goal. And then Hakbo in the 25th makes it 2-1. And uh, you thought uh, PSV is well on, on its way and they had then many chances to actually uh, double their lead. However, then it's again, uh, it's a Feyenoord uh, attack that seemingly stalls, the ball for, uh, finds its way in, it is badly cleared and falls right towards Danilo who can pull it in. I mean, it's almost uh, a slapstick goal. Only to be done that something very similar then uh, almost happened in the second half again, a seemingly stalled attack by PSV this time, but Hakpo out of nowhere gets a pass out to Thiel who makes it 3-2. Uh, and that seemed to be like a real shock for Feyenoord and settled the game for a while. However, with a few changes, uh, Feyenoord got back in, the, in, in this game and then uh, Kokchi, it felt a little bit out, out of nowhere, makes it 3-3 in the 73rd with a, a great shot that um, at first you thought is a brilliant goal, but then you see it got the deflection from Brentwith to really uh, get the height to make it into the net. And you see, whoa, what a game are we watching here? Uh, is this going to end in a 3-3? Because it's so ent entertaining. No, it did not end in a 3-3. Actually, PSV then find the winner 10, 10 minutes later. Again, Hakpo assisted. I mean, he was involved in all the goals. He assisted three and scored uh, one himself. Whips it in. Obispo gets his head there. Also, uh, Trauna gets his head there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 4-3 um, for him and uh, oh, oh, Obispo had to come, 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 of course, seemingly was concussed. But what a game that was. And, you th and, and, and at this moment you thought, this cannot get any better. 
AZ against Ajax cannot live up to it. Well, it kind of did. Uh, not in terms of goals, but you know, it started typically Ajax, uh, uh, Kudos getting a goal in the 12th minute and having firmly the game under control, not being uh, like super attacking, but you know, having the, the, the chance of being large, larger, better team until the Witt equalizes in the 44th minute. And then suddenly, you know, you felt the physicality and the referee had a big, big uh, power, power point of letting the game be physical. There was one where uh, Tata Ta got checked and had to be uh, treated for five, five minutes. I mean, AZ brought the physicality into that game. And that was the way to uh, really get to Ajax there. Um, and then they even get uh, the go-ahead goal through Otgard. And then in the second half, it was very similar to what Augsburg did to... Um, uh, Bayern the day before it was that just Ajax were out muscled and AZ were pressing high and never letting up never letting up the pressure it went even so far that Ajax resorted and this is Ajax this is the this, 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 this is the prototype I mean we all talk about Barcelona being for the short passing game no Ajax is the uh, genesis of, of that. And this is what they want, want to play. The beautiful short pass football with loads of control that I love so much about, uh, you know, when, when I started watching the Netherlands team. Ajax went to kick and rush. They brought everyone on the court. They brought on Klaas. They brought on Broby. They brought on Al Alves. They brought on Luca. They brought on Ocampos. I mean, it was everyone. And, you know, uh, who came over? I mean, Kudus, Bergwijn, Rensch, Taylor. I mean, all the good... It's really amazing how deep that squad was. But they couldn't handle AZ any, 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 anymore. They were lopping in balls. Yes, there were some chances. They hit the crossbar and, and, and so on. But I think in the, in the end, AZ really deserved that win. And what that, made, what that means now is that the league suddenly is very much wide open, at least when I look at just the points totals. Uh, if we look at the probabilities and we look at expect stands a little bit later, it's still very, very much in Ajax's hand. But at the moment, it's PSV uh, level terms with Ajax with a one goal better. And that makes a huge difference. AZ move in there. Feyenoord also in there. I mean, we have four teams within two points. What do you want more? We have 20, maybe already. I mean, there is definitely a second with 20, Herrenveen and Sparta potentially. Uh, but I would say Twente and Herrenveen that probably move uh, up, uh, up, up there as well. It's a very wide open league and that's a whole lot of fun. I gotta say, it's really, really interesting to see. Um, also interesting to see is that uh, Ajax, despite the law, still has a green bar as to uh, PAPSV in the over in the overstands, but I don't think we need to say much there. Um, I want to uh, go to the expected standings because it's still very much Ajax ahead of PSV because Ajax is a better team. However, we may get a title race this time around and PSV's chances of winning the title have definitely improved. Feyenoord at Z uh, round out the top four, it seems, and then it's 20. So yeah, uh, it's a really, really interesting league at this very moment. Uh, when we come back from the international break, uh, we have, I'll give you the next two rounds here. Um, gotta, gotta say, I mean, the immediate ones are not that uh, crazy games for the big teams in there. However, then the week after, and probably this is when the next uh, video comes, we have Feyenoord against Twente. And with PSV at Herrenveen, I think those are two games that are definitely worth your time. I think also Utrecht against AZ is not too bad. Ajax getting a little bit off. I mean, they, they could again in, you know, in by mid-October, maybe they have taken a bigger lead there. All to be seen. Uh, moving over to France, I already said I didn't see all that much from uh, those uh, from this week's games. Um, the one that sticks out, of course, uh, beside the PSG Lyon is the Marseille Rennes. This was uh, a, a big match with Guendouzi scoring both goals, first an own goal in the first half, and then in the second half he gets the equalizer. A little, you know, bump in the road for Marseille. I still think they seem very much to be the second best team. Monaco get a big uh, win at Reims, uh, bouncing back from their loss in the Europa League. You know, it was not a good. Nantes against Lens, a nil-nil, I don't think helps either team. Nice, the 1-0 loss at home to Angers. Uh, both teams got a red card, but I think it was very much um, the first minute to uh, to Depot red card. That actually probably helped Angers to get a uh, go-ahead goal um, 
just before the half before they get a second yellow which was given for diving uh, i read here um what other results do we have little uh, get a win over toulouse so toulouse getting a little bit better. and uh especially lorient the top one uh, winning again against Auxerre. We will see Lorient doing really, really well in this league. Uh, it was Lyon against PSG, where I really have to say uh, the first half was rather open. PSG get the early lead. Again, beautiful interplay between Neymar and Messi. It's actually at this moment, I have, I have to say it's Mbappé that's a little bit falling off uh, behind those two that are really in great form. And Messi is really now transitioning. I have mentioned for more to an assist giver um but now he also starts scoring goals i think this could be really really exciting however it also needs to be said that the defensive work of those uh, also need need to improve Lyon had their chances and they also have a really good four front line name lacazette in there had their chances to actually level up the score in the first half but in the second half i think it was all from what i could say i mean it was i was watching yesterday on three screens because we had three big games all at the same time and i probably should have made made a picture about that because it was really uh all here but uh, I, my focus was on Milan Napoli, of course. Uh, but I always watched over, and I saw in the second half. I mean, Neymar and Messi were uh, having chances to make it a second goal, but Gregory Lopez kept it, uh, kept him in play. And even when they scored, finally, I mean, there was a brilliant Messi free kick that uh, was saved by Lopez right to. Um, yeah, Sergio Ramos who puts it in, but he was offside. So yeah, uh, I think it was overall the right result, um, but it was a much, much more entertaining game than one might expect from the scoreline. Um, and Lyon, as I said, were in there as well. But now uh, with this, we have finally, finally uh, PSG clear on top because this is what we've been expecting all along. It's not that I necessarily want it, although I repeat myself, I had, uh, this goes back to the, to the night, I have slight PSG leanings uh, in France, but you know, there are many uh, interesting teams in there. Um, PSG ahead of OM, Lorient and Lens are probably the other two surprises in there. I am not sure if Lorient can keep that up. Lyon find themselves already at a distance as to Monaco, uh, Rennes, and so, so there are a few teams that you really think that should do better that are um, that are not quite there yet, but you know it's still uh, we have roughly 20%, so a fifth of the season is played. So there's loads to give. A few notable teams down. I mean Nice is not good. Not uh, you know after a decent season with a cup win, also find themselves a little bit in relegation trouble. And Strasbourg, uh, a really good team from last last season, uh, cannot get. They don't. They're the only winless team so far. Uh, and Brest is also this team that can uh, win big, but then on the other side they also lose and so on. It's uh, four relegated teams, that will be a big one in France. Um, again, expected standings, uh, it's still very much PSG's to lose. I mean, they could get over 100 points. There is a, a good chance for, for that. And on the bottom, it's Ajax Brest, uh, Brest Auxerre and Ajax Zo at the moment. But again, many changes still can occur. It is wide open. I have, I would say up until Troyes, everyone in there can pro probably get in there. And I'm not even sure that Strasbourg uh, and Nantes could not be direct in there as well. Uh, upcoming rounds again after the national break, we have another big one for PSG. We have a lot of uh, big... Um, Matchups. I mean, Nice is not that uh, great at this moment, but they can cause some some trouble. So this is come come back. We have a uh, Monaco not. We have also Lens against Lyon. I think that uh, is kind of a undervalued one. And of course, Marseille have to go to Angers as well. And I want to see what Lorient can do against uh, Lille. So yeah, interesting stuff for sure. And then uh, the week after. We have the big northern derby between Lille and Lens. I think that takes the headlines for sure. Uh, other than that, I think uh, the big ones must say against Ajax Zoo and uh, Paris, uh, PSG against Reims should be straightforward uh, wins again. Should. And then Brest against Loire Lorient or Breton Dar Derby. Could be some heat there. So that's it for me from those two leagues uh, that I, again, I truly enjoy. Please. Fill me in with anything that uh, you have observed that I didn't mention. I would be, I uh, would love to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.